it's that Quinjack thing again, right? So, um, slight change to the program you might have in front of you. Originally, we were look I was looking at doing this with a colleague, uh, Linda Gemmel from Volvo, um, where we were going to give the output of her Quinjack committee as well as mine. Unfortunately, Linda can't be with us today, uh, which is good news for you in one way and bad news in another. The good news is it means this presentation is going to be a little bit shorter. The bad news is, like all double acts, um, whether it's a straight one and a funny one, unfortunately, Linda was the funny one. So you've, you've got me instead. So who am I? I'm Simon Day. I, my day job is as Regional General Manager of Hanson Aggregates Northern Region business. Uh, I've been in the quarrying industry since 1985. When I joined, uh, I, I worked at Mount Sorrel Quarry for Redland as a part-time summer ex work experience job with a view that I would do something else after that. Uh, 30 years later, like many of us, uh, we got caught by the bug of quarrying and we're, and we're still here and loving every minute of it. So uh, that's my day job. My other job uh, is I act as chair of the Quinjack Plant Safety Committee. So what am I going to present to you today? Before I start, if we're honest, uh, probably there's one or two people in the room feeling a little bit like our man sat on the park bench. Um, I think, th th I think the science tells you, that, and the, 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 the uh, scientists will tell you that this time of day, about half past one or two o'clock, just after lunch, there is the official graveyard slot. And if half of you are feeling that, like that now, I think the statistics say by about two o'clock, the rest of you will be too. So my mission this afternoon is to try and stop you uh, not enough, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and leave you coming away with a, with a good impression of Quinjack and what it's all about. So, moving on. So, objective of the presentation today. Really, what I'm looking to do is give you a good overview of what the, uh, the Plant Safety Committee is working on at the minute, but really just bang the drum for Quinjack once again and give you a better idea of just how Quinjack works. Importantly, what you need to know, not what's just good for you to know, but what you need to know about Quinjack and why you need to get on board with Quinjack. And also, hopefully, a plea as well for you to see what you can do for Quinjack and, and, and really sell, sell Quinjack to you as, as a two-way thing. Something you can do for the, the organisation and Quinjack can give back to the industry. So what I'd be keen to do at the end as well is rather than just a straightforward question and answer session is spend a bit of time really trying to get some feedback from yourselves. You've heard a lot about Quinjack today and get some feedback from yourselves about how you think Quinjack can best serve the industry. Because at the end of the day, Quinjack is, as, as uh, Roy said at the start, Quinjack is ours, right? It's ours. So, Plant Safety Work Group, a little bit at the sort of scope and the membership. Um, in terms of remit of what the Plant Safety Group looks at, well, really, it's quite a wide remit. It's really anything to do with safety involving fixed and mobile plant in the quarry environment. So you, you appreciate that covers quite a wide scope of things. So there's quite, a, there's quite an opportunity there to look at a lot of things. So in terms of current membership, we, we've got about 12 people, uh, a regular, uh, regulars on the committee, um, from a range, of, a, a range of businesses and a range of, a range of um, uh, expertise within the industry. So there's myself as chairman. We have, like all the committees, I think there are eight or nine of them active at the moment. There is a, um, an HSE inspector who is, who is allocated to to each committee as well. We've got Simon Edwards on ours. And um, there are three representatives from quarry operators. You'll notice none of those there are from majors. Um, so it's not just something that's uh, you know, a, a big five dominated thing. You know, there's, there's the points of view from throughout the industry and not just the views of one or two big companies. Um, we've got a representative from one of the quarry services contractor, a, a drilling and blasting, sorry, a, a um, crushing and screening contractor from Banners. Uh, to get a contractor's viewpoint in. Um, and we've got um, representatives from plant manufacturers, as you'd expect. And we've also got some trainers, some people from training organisations. So it's a good spread. The one thing that we are sh running short on at the minute, and, and, and probably it's, uh, it's an oversight that we're now trying to address, is that we don't actually have any direct workforce representatives on that committee. Now, if you, if you cast your mind back to the whole aims of Quinjack at the start, was to have it was a tri tripartite thing. So it was it was 
the inspectorate, it was the operators and suppliers and the workforce. Now, why haven't we got a workforce uh, um, representative on the group? Well, part of it is actually finding somebody and finding, finding some people who are prepared to, to uh, put the name in the hat and, and, and come and join us. So one of the things I'm hoping to do get out of, out of this today is uh, hopefully people can go away and think of a few names or some people within their business who, who might benefit from, uh, who might benefit the committee, would also benefit themselves in terms of the, the development opportunity that gives them. So hopefully that'll be something that comes out today as well. So if we look at what the, uh, um, the plant safety work has been working on recently, so as I said, the group meets probably two or three times a year but we also have a number of subgroups that work within, under the auspices of the thing to come out with specific guidance. So recent outputs from the group, um, there's a guidance on uh, vehicle management uh, inquiries, which is effective, it's a rework of the Cold Pro guidance, which was produced after the Penny-Venny um, double fatality. Um, we've got some, th th there's various things on guidance on mobile jaw crushers uh, and, and various check sheets and things for mobile plant. Now, I'm not going to go through the list because it's a big, long list. The best way is actually just go on the website and have a look yourselves. There's all sorts of things. It's there for free download on uh, quinjack.co or through Safe Quarry. What I will go back to is the Penny one. Now, I'm hoping that most people in the room are familiar with Penny and some of the learnings that came from that. So my plea to you is if you take nothing else out of this presentation today, is take the time to go onto Quinjack, go on to, go on to Safe Quarry, look up everything you can about Penaveni, right? Because I promise you there are big, big learnings for everybody. I know from Hanson's own experience when, uh, you know, we made some step change, we made some changes in how we did things and controlled small vehicles on site that I'm absolutely convinced have prevented that kind of incident happening in our business, right? So, like I say again, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it again, have a look at Penaveni again uh, some of you may have had a look at it a couple of, three, a couple of years ago when there was a big push with, uh, I think there was a, a big thing through all the institute and, and uh, to, to try and share some knowledge on Penaveni, but please go in and have another look at that one. So that's the things we're working on at the minute. So I have but their outputs that are on the system now. There's obviously a, key, a few bits of key work in progress at the moment as well. So there's some work on uh, um, a guidance on electrical safety inquiries, some stuff on mobile crushing and screening guarding standards and some pedestrian safety stuff. So if you look at, first of all, the electrical safety inquiries, I think uh, Roy mentioned it earlier on. Um, one of the um, key things that Quinjack guidance will be doing is taking over from some of the historical HSE publications. So we're very close to publishing, it should be in January, February of next year, um, a new guidance note on um, uh, on electrical safety inquiries and, and, and having, and having a, um, a framework to give all operators the information they need to ensure that they're compliant with the needs of the requirements of the quarries regs. So the document itself, like a lot of Quin, like Quinjack um, documents, has been developed by people from the industry. So we've got three um, senior electrical engineers from within this industry and the help of a senior former um, a Manchester's principal inspector of, of um, uh, principal electrical inspector. So there's some quality people been in there who've looked at it and have made sure we've got something that is fit for the needs of our industry and meets the needs of our regulatory requirements as well. So I urge you to, to um, take a look at that when it comes out. As I said before, it will replace the HSC publication that will be withdrawn and this will be, the, uh, this will be the standard document. And again, this is one, it's not a case of this is nice to know, have a look if you feel like it. You need to know this. You need to be aware of the contents of this because when a quarry inspector rocks up at your site a year from now, they will have a copy of this in their, um, on their Quinjack app or, their, or, or maybe even a piece of paper. Of the, of, but they will refer to that and the expectation is that whatever you're doing on your quarry will have to meet that, that standard. Now, it's not regulation and you can, do, you can do something different if you want, but if something goes wrong, the situation would be that you'd be trying to explain to a judge why what you 
the thing you were doing that was different to the, the, the Quinjack guidance was justified and, um, uh, and was appropriate. And I'm sure our legal friend would tell us that's, quite a, that, that's a big ask sometimes. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So again, some of the things that are different to it is an updating of the regs. It also tries to modernise things as well to try and make allowance for the fact that the changes in the industry and the equipment we're using, particularly the use of diesel electric and even plug-in electric, plug-in diesel electric equipment, is becoming more and more, um, more and more prevalent on, on the sites we operate. So that's electrical safety. So next one is we're doing some work on um, guarding of mobile crushing and screening plant. Again, a big change within the industry over the last 10 or 15 years has been a massive increase in the use of mobile crushing and, and, and screening equipment. Much of it supplied to us via contractors on subcontract basis. Now, we're doing some work on this at the moment, really because we've had push from both sides. We've got quarry operators telling us contractors are coming on site with mobile crushing plant that we don't think meets the standard. Uh, we think, and, and we're having to ask them to retrofit guards and do this and do that. And we've got We've got contractors saying, we're taking a piece of kit on site that are perfectly okay on one site, and then we're being asked to put extra guards and, and, and make expensive and impractical and sometimes um, unneeded modifications to the pieces of equipment. So what we're trying to do is create a, a simple standard that people can look back to and a reference document that people can, a guidance document people can look back to. Now hopefully what we'll do with this, well, we'll definitely do, is try and make it make use of the technology that we've talked about earlier, things like the app, the smartphone app, those kind of things, so that the things are very much a pictorial thing. Just example pictures at the bottom there. Rather than have reams of writing saying this and this is the standard, pictures tell a thousand words. And the ability for, you know, the, the way I would envisage it being used, contractors on site discussing with a quarry manager the piece of kit that's just been delivered onto the site. They might be having a bit of a dispute over, is the guarding on that conveyor good enough, not good enough, within a couple of minutes they can flick up the app, flick through some pictures and actually come to a reasonable agreement on whether it is or it isn't. And it just gives people a point of reference to, to do away with some of the, 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 the crazy things that are happening on site. So that's again, that's something for the first quarter of, uh, next, of next year, again aimed at the newer technologies and making it, make it simple. Which moves me on to the last thing. This is probably the key piece of work that we're going to do this year. We're working on it now, and we hope by the middle of the year to have, have some, um, some good output on this. Now, sadly, like the Penaveni incident, the double fatality at Penaveni, this, this piece of work has been prompted by, by a tragic incident. Right. And the tragic incident, and again, the, it's, 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 it's pertinent that we're here today on the, at the, in, the, in the last week of November because exactly two years ago this weekend, Les Hole, who was a quarry foreman at Burford Quarry uh, in Oxfordshire, was killed at work. He was run over by one of his colleagues uh, driving a 966 loading shovel on a bright, sunny Saturday morning um, and uh, by one, a friend and colleague. Obviously, a, a tragic incident for for Les's family, he was a family man um, and a long-standing employee of the business. Les, typical of the guys that work in our business. 52 years old, that's probably about average age. Uh, I think most of us would agree that's about, that's about the power age in our industry at the minute. Average employee, long-serving, loyal employee, 24, 25 years with the business, worked his way through to form in the business, tragically killed when, you know, run over by a colleague. Now, you ask yourself, well, how can that happen? How can that happen in a modern quarry environment? How can, on a bright sunny morning, a man be run over and killed by a, um, a, a loading shovel? It wasn't reversed, he ran over and forwards. You know. We'll never really know exactly how it happened, why it happened. But what we're looking at is saying, well, what can we learn from this in the way of Penaveni and actually do things different within, within, uh, within a quarries? So the key things are this. There'll be, we've got a subgroup working on this within the team and we're working very closely with the quarry operator where this tragedy happened because they're very, very keen to be involved in this as well. Um, so there's work to be done with them. So in terms of outputs, what we're looking to have, there'll be a pretty much a conventional, a conventional report with a, um, a conventional guidance document just stating really all the key 
just as a key reminder and a key aid to remind us which elements of legislation and what we have to do to physically comply with the, with the regulations. That's the, pretty, that's the pretty standard stuff. So there'll be that there. What we're aiming at as well is a best practice guide. Again, a pictorial focus thing on, on getting, pulling together examples from the industry of the best practice in terms of traffic management and pedestrian management. Now, I've said there, the focus really is taking pedestrian safety beyond the far, car park. Now, the reason I say that, if you go around a lot of our sites in the industry, you'll actually think, often, a lot of work's been done in, 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 the, in the last 10 or 15 years in terms of when you first arrive at a site, we're actually now a lot better than we were in terms of directing people to the right place, having parking areas that are segregated from heavy vehicles, pedestrian walkways to the office. And we, to be fair, the industry's come a long way in that, and I think a lot of us have put a lot of effort in. Things start to fall down a little bit when I, as I say, go beyond the car park. Once you get out onto the site, then, uh, then things are maybe not quite as good as we, as, as we would like, and there's a lot of room for improvement. So the focus is going to be on, on examples rather than just a, a load of pictures of nice, nice tidy car parks with painted lines on the floor, real practical ways of keeping people and heavy equipment in different, apart from each other. And then, Obviously, another element to this is going to be a toolbox talk. So the toolbox talk is going to be aimed at increasing the perception of risk of operators and staff on our sites. Now, the reason I say perception of risk is one of the issues we've got is we're so used to walk it, working around heavy, large machinery flying around on our, our, our hall rows that we, we don't see the hazards anymore. And it's a common thing with, with, with a, a lot of accidents that we see throughout the industry is a lot of it comes down to perception of risk. So the work we're going to be doing then in terms of toolbox is, is raising that perception. The kind of things we're looking at are just, you know, trying to use novel ideas of trying to get people to think differently. There are lots of times where if you asked, if you asked an operator that to walk, if he was walking down the side of a hall road where heavy dump trucks are, are operating on, would he say that's safe? Nine out of ten times the guys would say, yeah, we do that every day. Uh, he can see me, I can see him, I keep out of the way. If you said to that same operator, if you were walking down that down that hall road with your three-year-old grandson carrying your arms or walking with him, would, would that be safe? And they would say, no, of course not. Of course it wouldn't be safe because somebody could hit him and whatever. But again, it's that perception of risk. We sort of, you know, uh, we, a, lot of guy, a, a lot of guys you talk to will almost assume they, the high-vis clothing they're wearing is a suit of armour, and we all know it isn't. So again, it's raising that. So, Target for publication of that is, is quarter two, 2016. And hopefully, again, that'll in that, that, that will, will encourage people to think differently about how they handle pedestrians on site. And, and again, like Penaveni, people make step changes to what they do to reduce the chance of this. Okay. So that's the, that's the output of the, um, that, that's what the group's working on. I hope to just give you a flavor of the kind of things we're doing. Um, so, Really now, sort of go on to the sort of questions and feedback, really. So, first of all, any, any direct questions from the floor? Must have got one or two. Yeah. Okay, well... Yeah. The Corey Face guidance, could you do that as a, as a, a workshop that went around the country, perhaps? Um, if, if people believe, it might be a little bit of a dry subject for, for that one, but, um, but it's one something we could consider, I suppose, yes. It's worth, it's, it would be worth considering, yes. I mean, perhaps it's, it's something maybe, perhaps if, if, the, if the branches, the IOQ branches, have a think about that one and think it's something that they would benefit from, then um, we'll perhaps, uh, we, 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 could, we could do that one. Any more? Okay. So just, you know, we've talked about Queen Jack, we've got a little bit of time. So we've talked about Queen Jack a lot today. Um, and really, um, do people, I, I'm interested in feedback from people as to whether they think Queen Jack is actually focused on the correct areas to drive this, uh, to, to, to enhance this drive for, for zero harm. Has anybody got any thoughts? On whether we're looking at the right things from the things you've seen today in the other groups? Yeah, I, I think 
you know, we all in management don't need too much convincing, but yeah. I think I wonder about the workforce. Are, are you getting it out, the message out to the workforce? Uh, you've got Hillhead coming around the corner. Yeah. Is that a, not a great opportunity for you to publicise more of what Quinjack is doing? Well, I think you say the management know, but if you remember the start of today, I think Roy did a show of hands or who's heard of Quin or who's heard of Quinjack, and there weren't that many hands went up. Now there may be a few shy there. So if the penetration to the management teams here at the thing today is 20% at best, I would imagine the penetration level at the moment down to the average man in a quarry is a heck of a lot less than that. You know. So part of the things that they're trying to do, as you've seen with Mike and the Quinjack app and those kind of things, is to try and raise the profile. But we'll not get to those guys by bypassing you. You know, the people in this room today, what you've got to do is take hold of Quinjack. Quinjack is yours. You've got to, you've got to start using it yourself. You've got to start looking at so You've got to start challenging your managers to say, have you seen this? Have you looked at that? Have you looked at that guidance? Are we following this? That's what we've got to keep reference to it and raise that profile of it. And I think everybody in the room's got a, a responsibility to do that. Because at the end of the day, you know, you know Quinjack is about, it's about, you know, it, it, it works on the basis of, uh, Roy said experts in these committees. I perhaps not, I, I wouldn't necessarily say experts, but what I would say is committed quarrying professionals who have a passion for health and safety, who are willing to commit their time and effort into into moving the in, into moving safety forward just that little bit at a time, right? So it needs the lifeblood of it is is people people giving that enthusiasm and 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 trying to use the good work we're trying to do. And if people think maybe some of the guidance could could be better, then come and join. Come and join. The, every committee the, there's there's no shortage of you know will not say no to anybody who wants to wants to come and 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 come and. Uh, Contribute. Any more? So again, as I said, you know what I'm asking. You know, each and every one of you is: Could you commit some of your time to um, a Quinjack committee? Is this is there a particular element of of, of safety that you that, that you feel you've got something to give? It might even be something as simple as, you know, I said before, we're putting together a best practice guide on pedestrian safety in, in quarries. If there's something on one of your sites that's good and worth showing people, well, get some photos, send, send us a photo. We, we can include it if it's right, we'll include it in the, in, the, uh, in the guidance. Again, if there's something, you've got one of your sites that's particularly bad, again, I, it would be, it'd be great to see a photo of it. And I'm not saying, we, we obviously wouldn't name and shame, but pictures, showing what's, what good looks like and what, what, what poor looks like are absolutely critical to make these things work. So the more the merrier. So again, that's, I'm, you know, I'm throwing it back at you guys. That's what, you know, that's what we need. And all the committees and all the things to do need that. Have you got somebody working for you, you know, uh, a, a, an employee working for you that you think would, would, would benefit from being involved in a, a Quinjack project? Because I can assure you it's a great, the, 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 there can be great things to be involved in. So, in terms of career development and, and, and that, you know. I mean, just little things, I mean, why do I do it? Obviously, it's part because I've got a, a passion for, for improving, improving the business we work in, and I'll, you know, I see it as part of my responsibility for, as a professional person in this industry, but also because it gives you other, other opportunities. You know, if, if the only time you ever sit down with a quarry inspector is when he comes to your site to, uh, to, to, to grill you about an incident that's happened, or do an inspection or something of that time. It, it, there's, you know, you're not going to get as much out of it as, as I'll get or people on these committees will get with sitting down with a quarry inspector in the, in the forum, a Quinjack forum, discussing safety issues in an open and uh, in an open forum. So um, I think I've probably tried to. I've, I've banged the drum enough, and and uh, uh, I hope I haven't overflogged it. But please. Um, please, you know, Quinjack is yours. You know, it needs your input. It needs you to take the outputs as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>